Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture titled Hey Machine Learning Engineers Keep It Simple. My name is Dr. Raj Dandekar. I graduated with a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from IIT Madras in 2017 and then I completed my PhD from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston in the field of machine learning. I have made several videos and playlists on this channel particularly the machine learning teach by doing, build neural networks from scratch and build large language models from scratch. The reason I decided to make this particular video is that recently I have noticed a trend in which a lot of students who are learning machine learning, a lot of ML engineers and researchers as well, they are blindly using ML libraries such as PyTorch and TensorFlow to solve any problem given to them. No one really stops and thinks, is there any other way to solve this problem? Is there a simpler way to solve this problem? And most importantly, is the approach which I'm implementing, will it be actually useful to the people whom I'm solving this problem for? Will it actually help the clients for which I'm delivering this solution? Will it actually help patients if it's a healthcare related problem? There is a real need in the machine learning community for people to stop, think and ask the question, why? Why am I running a neural network? Is there a simpler way to do this? Is the neural network solution actually creating value? Its training accuracy is 90%. Awesome. But what does that mean in real life? Is it actually helping people? Can I stop and think why it is working the way it is working? That's the whole reason I'm making this video. In this video, what I'll do is I'll take a simple example and I'll try to demonstrate to you that sometimes complex neural networks is not the best way to approach a problem. Sometimes there are simpler things, more intuitive things, which are much more useful and much more helpful. So let's get right into the lecture and start looking at this problem. So here's the problem. Imagine you have joined a company or an industry as a machine learning engineer. And the company tells you that, hey, we have partnered with a hospital and here's the data which we have collected from 15 patients. Here are the features such as cholesterol level, age, average sleep hours, blood pressure, chest pain level. What you have to do or what your objective is to build a machine learning model based on this data set so that we can predict whether the patient has a heart disease or not. Of course, this is a very simple data set, but I just want to illustrate a point here. So as the machine learning engineer, you look at this problem and then you look at these features and you see that, okay, we have 15 patients here and I have five features, cholesterol, age, average sleep hours, blood pressure and chest pain. I have studied machine learning and I've studied neural networks and I've studied classification. So it seems like the neural network classification is the best way to approach this problem. Here's how the neural network schematic looks like. And then what you decide is let me use PyTorch or TensorFlow and let me construct a code for this problem. You import the data set, you split the data set into training and testing, you do normalization of the features, you define the neural network architecture to have 16 neurons in the first layer, ReLU activation, uh, and then finally you have the sigmoid activation, let's say. You have the ADAM optimizer and then you use binary cross entropy loss and you also um, write a code to plot the training and the validation loss and then you execute the code when you execute the code you see that oh awesome the accuracy which you have is really increasing so you see when you reach 200 epochs the accuracy almost is around one the training accuracy is almost around one and the validation accuracy is also really pretty high uh, and then what you do is you make a plot for the training accuracy and the validation accuracy and you also make a plot for the training loss and the validation loss. As you can see, the training loss decreases, the validation loss also decreases. That's pretty awesome, right? So here you can see here is the loss matrix and here is the figure which shows the decrease in the training and validation loss. You are very happy. You show this to your manager. The manager is also pretty happy. You work on this problem more. You refine it further because of course, in the first iteration, you won't have the correct values. You will change the activation function. You will change the number of epochs. You might even change the neural network architecture fully. You will change the optimizer step size. You will make sure the plotting improves, but overall the structure of the code will remain the same. You'll spend two weeks packaging this code 
and then you will have a neural network which has an awesome training loss and awesome test and validation loss then you go to the client which is the hospital you give this solution to them and you tell them that hey look i have developed this model now you give me any patient and you give me these four features um, or rather the five features of this patient and i'll be able to predict whether the patient has a heart disease or not now stop and think what you have done over here you have this complicated neural network which is supposedly giving a good answer but do you know which feature among these is the most important no do you know what combination of these features interact to predict whether the patient has a heart disease or not no so when a patient comes do you know which variable should be given the most importance no do you have an underlying equation which predicts whether heart disease is yes or no yes you do have an underlying equation because this is a huge neural network but the equation is so long that you won't be able to write it on a piece of paper now the hospital tells you that we are not really sure that we can implement this model in practice right because here we are dealing with real lives of patient and you can't even tell me why a certain feature will work the best maybe you do some feature importance analysis and do a plot that this feature shows the highest correlation but still what is the physics what is the physics behind why some features are important and some are not your complicated neural network cannot answer that so you have solved this problem in a very mathematical and technical sense but now you can stop and think about it is there a better way to solve this problem which is more intuitive so intuitively you know that maybe chest pain level and blood pressure contribute the most right so let's look at this column again let's look at the chest pain level what do you observe here well what i do observe here is that when chest pain level is less than 3 heart disease always seems to be no see when the chest pain level is less than 3 the heart disease is always seems to be no whereas if the ch chest pain level is greater than or equal to 3 the heart disease is always predicted to be yes doesn't that mean that there is a possibility of a much simpler model here and that simpler model is a decision tree in fact if you run a simplified decision tree you will get that the model is as simple as this you get this data and then you just predict or you just see the chest pain level of the patient if the chest pain level is less than 2.5 they likely won't have the heart disease if the chest pain level is greater than 2.5 they likely do have a heart disease you see there are two models here both of them have a very high accuracy but which model is the hospital likely to trust more it's of course the decision tree model because it's much more simpler to explain it's also interpretable and there is physics associated with it intuitively it makes sense to any doctor that a chest pain level contributes the most it's a very actionable model although it's a simpler model that does not mean that the model is not useful usually as machine learning engineers we are trained to think that the more technical or the more complex a model is that means it's better right but sometimes simple decision trees are perfectly suited to solve the problem they are much more interpretable and they are much more useful to the end end consumer or the end customer this is what i found in so many real life applications that neural network is not always the best way to solve a problem there are much more interpretable ways there are much more useful ways and that those are usually decision trees so instead of blindly solving a problem with neural networks deep neural networks try to take a break try to think about the problem first try to look at the data try to ask yourself intuitively which of this feature should matter the most can i construct a decision tree if you can construct a decision tree start with a decision tree it will be much more interpretable it will be much more easier to explain and then you can also have a neural network ready along with it and then you can compare the two models right but don't always blindly run a neural network just because it seems smart to do sometimes these simple decision trees can be extremely useful to every stakeholder in the machine learning chain your company the client um and even to you it will be lot more satisfying if the models you develop are actually used in practice so through this lecture i wanted to illustrate this concept that try to take a break and try to ask yourself why things are working the way they are working just running a pytorch or tensor flow library and a model using chat gpt why it might make you think that you have solved the problem but is the problem actually useful or is the solution actually useful to the consumer 
and sometimes the way to the solution being useful and helpful is simplicity sometimes being simple in your approach is the best way to go forward and that's usually the hardest being simple is also sometimes hard because the first intuition is just to run a neural network right so it's actually hard to take a step back and run a simpler model thank you so much everyone i hope you like this lecture i'll plan to have many lectures along these lines um because i am really fascinated with why things work the way they work and if you ask questions in your modeling process you might come up with simpler and better models thank you so much